Thank you so much for your testimony. Uh, the next testifier uh, will be Aaron Chafe. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Aaron Chase. Chairwoman Moran, uh, members of the committee, my name is Erin Chase and I'm a Minnesota cannabis patient. I'm here today to express my opposition of Bill 766 as it fails to adequately address the primary barrier to access, affordability. The day I received my intractable pain certification, I was ecstatic as I had spent the last 12 years exhausting all available treatment options shy of surgery to address my ovarian com complications and persistent pain as a result of two herniated discs. Unfortunately, the elation subsided after a few visits with the pharmacist, where I quickly learned that my feeling my best without the use of opiates would at a minimum cost $285. In October of 2016, I visited a state that offered reciprocity. Nevada. There I was able to purchase an equivalent supply for just $150. In my frustration, I became a patient advocate with Sensible Minnesota and discovered many others shared my predicament. One of our patients with HIV is only able to afford $200 in medication each month. But if you were to take the dosages recommended by the pharmacist he works with, it would cost him nearly $800 a month. Patients have left their families behind for Oregon, Washington, and Colorado to afford for the medications they so desperately need. One mother in particular had to relocate to another state, source employment, just to provide her son's caregiver here in Minnesota the money to afford the medication to treat his autism. A young mother of four-year-old daughter plagued by seizures in west central Minnesota is unable to afford the $500 a month to treat her child's condition. Imagine the stress associated with knowing treatment exists, but is financially inaccessible, that your child's independence or even their life could be taken by a seizure at any given moment. The Minnesota Cannabis Program ought to allow for the additional manufacturers and the vaporization of raw flour as it's less costly to produce. The state of Pennsylvania began operating only oils and extracts form in February of 2018. In August of 2018, just six short months later, Pennsylvania introduced raw flour amid strong demand for affordable prices from patients. Consequently, local publications have reported prescription costs are expected to be cut in half. Minnesota draws from a rich history of being the vanguard of health measures for other states as for other states to use as a model. Historically, we were ranked first from 2000 to 2006, but according to the United Health Foundation's annual ranking report, we have declined year over year to seventh. For a state with such a storied history of public health, it is unfortunate that our medical cannabis program is less efficient and less affordable than states as Nevada and Pennsylvania. You all have the power to enable this program to function as it was designed to do, provide medical relief to Minnesotans who so desperately need it most. It is my sincerest hope that you act in the best interest of your patient constituents. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you for your testimony.